centenary of Dr. Buntop's birth gives us an opportunity to place her pioneering work in a context of linguistic research dating back more than two centuries. There have been at least six different Thai speaking groups that have settled in Northeast India since the 1200s. The Ahom, the Aiton, the Kamti, the Kamyang, the Pake, and the Trung. Today, the Trung people speak a variety of Singapore language, as you heard in the video that was played before this talk. Today, the Ahom people overwhelmingly speak Assamese as their native tongue, as indeed do the Kamyang. But the Aiton, Kamti and Pake languages are still being learned by children. Research on these languages, undertaken by the speakers themselves, dates back to at least the 1790s, with the composition of the Boromra, that's an Assamese word, but it's a lexicon of words in the Tayahom script with glosses in Assamese. So written in the Ahom language as well as the Thai words. We'll see an example in a moment. This was the first of a long tradition of making dictionaries to help interpret the Tayahom manuscripts, a tradition that continues until the present. The Boromra was composed in 1795 and the most important manuscript of this is held in the Department of Historical and Antiquarian Studies in Guwahati. And we haven't been able to study that adequately, but this particular manuscript belonging to the late Zunaram Sangbun Pukon, who can there be seen looking towards his home original village across the rice field. The manuscript is what we see here. It's a list of words in Thai language. On the left hand side, we see all the different forms of the word gai. In the middle column, go. On the right hand side, go. And their, the explanation of their meaning in Assamese. This manuscript we have used as the basis for the online um, Ahom dictionary. And for example, when searching for the word chicken, that dictionary gives words, only words, that we have found evidence for in Diahom manuscripts. And we can see there the um, entry for the word guy. We don't know what the tone of that word was in Diahom, but you can see the entry for this word on the bottom left of the photograph of the manuscript that in the online dictionary is linked to the word. And it says there, guy jamba, that means for Gai we say, ba as, as uh, modern Thai wa. Gai jam ba, kukurak. Kukurak is an Assamese word, kukura meaning a chicken. From the early 1800s, British officials, who were also often scholars, started to collect information on the various Thai languages. And among these, the most important of the early works was an article by William Robinson from 1849 employing a word list provided by the Reverend Nathan Brown, an American missionary. And this list was the first to try and notate the tones of a spoken Thai language in Northeast India. And in fact, quite early for that kind of work in many parts of the world. And there was nothing of this type to try and actually understand the tone systems of these languages undertaken until the first arrival of Dr. Bantop in 1955. So what does Robinson's list look like? Well, here is a small um, segment from his 1849 paper. And halfway down, you can see he says, by its finely modulated intonations, sounds organically the same, that he means consonants and vowels, are often, made to, are often made to express totally different ideas. Thus, ma, for instance, with a rising tone signifies dog. Ma, the italic M denoting the falling tone, signifies to come, while the same syllable with an abrupt termination or a sudden cessation of the voice at the end of it, ma, denotes a horse. So this later either refers to some kind of glottalization of the tone or some kind of creakiness of the tone. 
Elsewhere in the text, Robinson notates another tone where italics are used for the vowel rather than the consonant, as with the word for father, for. Robinson doesn't describe its tone, but in 1902, Grierson, taking the information that he got from Robinson, but also possibly directly from Nathan Brown in a source that has yet to be identified, described it as a straightforward tone of even pitch. And some words combine the dot and the italic consonant, perhaps suggesting a total of five tones. Um, I wrote an attempt to reconstruct this tonal system back in, the, uh, back in about 2005, and this work was added to by the excellent work of Ricka Dockham in the last couple of years. And here's an example of the word list, and you can see the italic initial consonant in words like air and um, beads and beat and belly and bite and blood and boat and body. And if we, if we consider the words for boat and body, these two have the same tone. And this is an example of the way, although this list is not consistent, in particular, for example, we would expect a dot underneath the word for B, but although this is not consistent, it is at least a reasonable attempt to understand the tonal systems of these languages. So this brings us to an appreciation of Dr. Bunchop's work in Northeast India. We've seen in the short video a recording of the Kamke Khan, recorded by Dr. Bunchop in Nampake in the 1970s, sung by the late Ni Bang. And this song, this Ke Khan style, which has, is composed to honour an important visitor. There have been several examples of this. One was composed for um, Indira Gandhi when she visited the village in the 1970s. One was composed to honour the publication of the first printed book in Taipake, which I had organised in the year 2000. So they are composed for important occasions and important individuals. But the song sung in honour of Dr Bunchop is still known. And as recently as the beginning of February this year, I recorded Am Sao Kyo singing that song and you saw a small extract of her singing it. And the prayer ceremony held in the Trung village of Nak Tong. Nak Tong is a Singpo word, but Na, meaning a paddy field, is um, undoubtedly a Thai borrowing. Nak Tong, or Potargaon. Potargaon also means paddy field village. Um, um, ba Na in, in Thai Aiton, to honour Dr. Banchop. And you saw some, uh, some extracts of that ceremony and some reminiscences by Nang Ihom of speaking with Dr. Bunchop. And I hope that you could follow the words that Nang Ihom was speaking in Thai language. I subtitled all the words in Singpo, but the Thai ones I'm hoping you were able to get. Dr. Bunchop's publications on linguistics and her publications were of such uh, significance that I'm really only able to speak about the linguistic publications here. But probably her most important single publication is the Pake Thai English Dictionary. Um, I first saw a copy of this in 1996 when it was brought out to show me the copy that had been given by her to the villagers in Nampake village. And I immediately arranged to get it photocopied pretty big undertaking in those days in Northeast India, and a very heavy document it was to bring back to Australia and gradually enter into a computer to form the basis of the first Taipake dictionary, electronic dictionary that I made, which is itself the basis for a much bigger operation that um, Ailot, um, a member of the Taipake community, has been a lot high long has been undertaking for many years and we hoped that we would be able to produce the final version this year but the current crisis has made that a little harder 
Her manuscript Dicton Dictionary is a resource that needs to be further studied. In particular, one very interesting feature is the many cluster initial words there, and I'll speak about them again shortly. But her work was pioneering in so many ways. She was the first scholar since Robinson to seek to understand the tonal system of the Thai languages. So tones are so basic for Thai languages that how can we imagine people studying them without attempting to understand this? But it was 106 years from Robinson's publication to the arrival of Dr. Bantop before tones were again important in people's realization of what needed to be studied. And her transcriptional system of the six tones and the order in which she named them, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is given below here, this is still used by members of the community. So, and members of the community, when I ask them to confirm which tone a particular word is, they will go through um, nung, song, sound, si, ha, oh, nobot ha, number five. Um, or Nambutsi, uh, number four, in this way, to identify the differences between these tones. She also played an important part in the documentation of languages. And I'm going to give you a couple of very small extracts here um, as examples of what um, people could speak. And this is a small example of a um, Dai Kam Yang story was spoken by the late Zhao Kien Jolik. But when listening to this text, two modern experts in Dai Kam Yang, Deben Jolik and Samyat Jolik, the late Samyat Jolik, both agreed the language used here was Pake and Kam Yang mixed together. That's because there was only one village, even in Dr. Bantop's time, that's where Kamyang language was still spoken. And there were several Pake villages not far away. And so they would converge their speech towards the, the Pake. So let's listen to a little bit of this one. <laughs> And actually, to me, that sounds very Thai Pake like. This is an area that still needs to be studied, but I'm not even sure that we can get a clear understanding. By the time I reached the last village where Kamyang is spoken, Pao in January 1998, the late Zhao Sam Yet, born in the same year as Dr. Bantop, was the acknowledged expert in his language, but he also spoke a mixed Pake and Kamyang. And I want to give you an example of what he did, because on one occasion, he spoke three words in Pake and then spoke them again in Kamyang immediately afterwards. So listen out for the initial consonant and the tone of the word meat, which is ne in Pake and lu, in Kam in Kam Yang, that should say. So it seems that even by the time Dr. Bunchop reached India, the Thai Kam Yang language was at least moribund and difficult to distinguish from Thai Pake. I mentioned before the clusters, Bunchop's manuscript Aiton English Thai Dictionary, which I have, thanks to the kindness of Dr. Nawawan, taken photographs of but for which much more study is needed, recorded the following initial clusters for Aiton, mainly in onomatopoeic words. Now there are some very interesting clusters there, such as CR, JR, and SR, SR, which are not found in um, most Thai languages. I've given you here some examples of some of the words that Dr. Bantop recorded in her Taiton dictionary. And what you can see here is that she has counted up to nine different tones for Aiton. And Aiton is difficult in terms of its tones, but in the end, the analysis that I came up with in the late part of the last century was that there were really only three distinctive tones remaining 
in everyday Aton speech. And finally, to talk about the returning of materials to the community. So thanks to the kindness of Dr. Nawawan, I was able to get the original recordings digitized in the early 2000s, and some of them were re-digitized about 10 years later, and return these materials to the community. The songs recorded by Dr. Bantop are now held in high regard and have become a kind of standard for traditional songs valued by the Thai communities in India. And the recordings of stories and songs have brought the voices of the old people back to their children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. So it was when I first played the recording of the late Nhi Pe Bang, who sang the first song you heard on the short video heard earlier. And I must tell you briefly the story because when I played that song, I played it to um, an, one of the elders, a lady in Yankhet, and her third son was sitting there. And as soon as the song began, um, she muttered something to her son, Sam, and he got up and walked away. And I thought, he's walking away because he doesn't like these traditional songs. But I was wrong. Within about five minutes, there came a sound I'd never heard in a Thai village, someone running up the steps into the house. They never run up the steps. And what it was, it was the son of the late Nhi Pe Bang, coming to listen to his father's voice because his father had died when he was one years old. So he had never heard his father's voice and there for the first time he heard it. A really moving story of the importance of returning materials to the community. And to conclude, a ghost story told by the late Aini Mohendro of the Tai Aiton. He passed away before I first reached Northeast India, but I have stayed many times with his widow, his son and grandchildren. You can hear the Tayaiton language here and you can also hear the ghost language. ต่อไปนี้ไอ้นี้จะได้เล่านิทานพานสุดพานสิ่งพานตึกเอ่อกระสังก็มาต้องสีวันเรื่องตั้งปู่เท่าเมเท่าด่ากันด่ากันสีปู่เท่าเป็นหยาตู้เรื่องตุดกาเอ